everyone, it's Kayla here from Journey Dog Training. I'm out here in Santa Rosa, California at the home of my friend Lily here, who's a fellow dog trainer. Um, and today for Training Tuesday, Barley and I are going to do a little bit of some demonstrations on how to teach your dog to be calm, cool, and collected around all sorts of different noises. So a lot of dogs get either really frightened of, really aroused by, or just kind of like barky, jumpy, whatever, um, at different noises around the house. And often this is something that is upsetting to us. Um, so there's kind of two different aspects of this problem for a lot of people. Um, sometimes it's that when your dog hears that truck across the street backfiring or another dog barking in the distance or whatever, your dog starts barking like mad and it drives you nuts. And then there's the aspect where a skateboard goes by and your dog has a meltdown and then your dog is stressed for kind of the rest of the walk um, and that is um, in some ways more concerning because then that skateboard going by and your dog's reaction is a problem for both you and your dog because your dog had some sort of emotional reaction to it and in both cases um, a lot of times issues with sound are um, kind of emotional reactions um, but there's the dog that's being kind of hyper vigilant barky and then there's the dog that is actually really, really scared of those sounds. Luckily, we can deal with both of these things the same way. So what we're going to be doing today is um, basically what's called counter conditioning and desensitization. Um, and all that is, is exposing your dog to a version of the sound that is quiet enough that your dog notices it, but doesn't really care about it. Feeding them treats and then gradually increasing the sound. Um, volume. So the desensitization is the fact that we're gradually, gradually, gradually increasing the volume of the sound. Um, the counter conditioning is the food feeding and that is also really, really important because what we're not, we're trying to do is not just habituate the dogs to the sound that upsets them because habituation would just be we start it quietly, we gradually get it louder and louder and some dogs are just going to learn to ignore it because They've learned that it's not that scary. They learned it doesn't predict anything bad. That can work, but that same pro protocol um, where you increase the volume louder and louder without pairing the treats can also result in what's called sensitization, where your dog actually gets more and more and more sensitive to that sound, often because you've moved too quickly, but there actually is some cool research out there um, where they had rows of kittens in a laboratory and they brought a dog in um, and saw what the kittens did and they did this day over day, week over week, whatever. I will try to find a link to this study for you guys <clears throat> eventually. Um, and what they found was even though all of the kittens were exposed to the exact same thing, they all were exposed to this dog outside of their cage for the same amount of time at the same intensity, blah, blah, blah. Some of the kittens <clears throat> were totally, de um, habituated to that dog. They had no issues. They were totally relaxed. No biggie by the end. Whereas some of the other kittens were totally sensitized and their reactions actually got more pronounced, more aggressive, more fearful as time went on. So the big thing here is that A, we need to go really, really slowly and B, we need to be pairing our scary sounds or upsetting sounds with treats so that we can guarantee we're moving towards that desensitization and counter conditioning, not um, pure habituation or even worse, sensitization where your dog's reaction gets more and more extreme over time. So one of the most common ones that we're going to deal with are thunderstorms and fireworks. Um, the awesome thing about doing this talk right now is guys, we're not in thunderstorm season in most parts of the world and we're not in fireworks season. So this is a great time to start working on this with your dogs because we can actually control um, to some degree how much our dogs are being exposed to. Because the thing here is if we start trying to teach your dog that thunderstorms are no biggie, and then tomorrow we have a house shaking, earth shattering thunderstorm and you're not there to help comfort your dog and help get them through it, your training just took a whole bunch of steps backwards. So the great thing about doing this right now um, in September is that we're actually probably gonna be able to make some pretty good progress without having any big setbacks. So what I've got here is I have my laptop over off screen, I have my dog down here, I have a bunch of treats here, and I'm going to demonstrate this with a couple different sounds that I found for free on YouTube. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate with a couple different sounds. But for you guys, what you can go ahead and do 
is um, pick the sounds that you already know are potentially concerning to your dog and then start at a really, really low level. Um, and ultimately what you'll need to do is get this louder and louder and louder. Um, as long as your dog is continuing to be nice and cool, calm, <laughs> collected, relaxed. And then you need to start taking this on the road because if you only ever do this in your little training room, your dog is not necessarily going to learn that the sound of a skateboard going by is no biggie because skateboards actually never go by while you're in your training room. Um, skateboards also pose a little bit of an extra challenge because for a lot of dogs, it's the sound, but also the skateboarder whizzing by that's a problem. We're not going to talk about the skateboarder whizzing by, but um, in any case, eventually part of your training plan here needs to be figuring out how to take this on the road. So I'm going to read, I've got a comment here, I'm going to just make sure I take care of them, and then we will go ahead and get going. Uh, so, hi. <laughs> um, great. So, I've got my trusty laptop. I'm going to balance it here. And then I'm going to rotate you guys down a little bit so that you guys are going to be able to see Barley. Hopefully my mic is going to be catching up the sounds that we have going here. Um, so yeah, hopefully it does because otherwise we're going to have a, a rough show, huh? All right, so let's go ahead and start with the one that actually like might potentially get Barley's attention. Dog Barley isn't usually a super sound sensitive dog, but um, the sounds of other dogs barking often gets him pretty upset. Um, I will also link to a video of me teaching him to do the snoot challenge where actually about halfway through the video, he totally loses it because another dog is barking. Just so you guys can see that Barley actually does have some issues with this. He's not just some perfect trainer's demo dog. He actually, you know, he's not a robot. He's a, he's a real dog that also has uh, feelings about things. So um, I have, I just Googled, well, Googled, YouTubed dog barking. And it's the very first thing. It says dogs barking in all caps to make your dog bark 11 dog breed sparking sound effects. And we're gonna start with Doberman. So I'm going to keep this at, it's about three, uh, one quarter volume right now. I tested all the volumes before we got them on, on camera um, and that should be about loud enough where you guys can hear it. Barley's gonna notice it, but hopefully not so loud that um, Barley's going to have any sort of adverse reaction because again, anytime he practices that, those neural pathways that say, when I hear dogs, I bark, get stronger. We don't want that. So I'm going to move him too so that he's a little bit more in frame uh, and we'll get started. Come here, bud. Um, and he seems to want to lie on this. So we will just put that over here. Over here. Good boy. And you know what? We're going to change our minds here and we're just going to sit on the floor with Barley. And now we're all nice and in frame. So, here we go with the Doberman barking sound effect. And what I do is I have some treats ready. Um, and Barley is drooling. And once that sound starts, I'm going to feed Barley. I'm gonna turn the sound off, then the treats stop. If you guys have watched my video on open bar, closed bar, that's gonna be familiar because that's essentially what we're doing is basically he's learning when that sound starts, treats happen. When that sound stops, bar is closed, treats are gone. Good boy. And stop. He was very relaxed by that. He didn't seem to be looking around, trying to figure out what was going on. So we're gonna turn up the volume a little bit. Again, guys, if you have a dog that actually has some serious sound sensitivities or phobias or whatever, um, you're not going to necessarily be moving this quickly. I want this to look really easy and really boring for you guys. Pretty much like what you're getting here, Barley is totally relaxed. I want your dogs to be relaxed while you're doing this. This should be easy for you guys. You should feel bored. Um, if you are getting reactions out of your dog, you've gone too far too fast. Just take a couple steps back, all right? So we've up the volume a little bit. Here we go. Good boy. And now we have switched to a Boston Terrier, apparently. And I'm just continuing to feed barley while that's going on. And we'll stop it. 
All right, and now what we're gonna do is, um, I could increase the volume a little bit more because he's still pretty relaxed, he's still not really fixating, but what I actually wanna show you guys is a really cool thing here. So part of desensitization and counter conditioning um, to make it really effective is actually going to be teaching your dog what to do when he hears that sound. So it's all well and good to say, when the thunder war uh, thunderstorm starts, I'm gonna be giving you cookies. It's also great to tell your dog um, when the thunderstorm starts, I want you to come find me um, or go lie on your mat or go do whatever. Um, in the case of a dog barking at Barley, what I would like him to do is slam his nose against my hand um, because that is a nice physical cue for me. It's nice and physical for him. Um, it's one of my favorite cues. Basically, if I can solve um, or prevent a problem um, using a hand touch where he touches his nose to my hand, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and the reason we really like this is there actually was some really cool research that came out that basically found that teaching rats to do something as part of a desensitization protocol um, helped reduce their stress levels and reduce the likelihood that they were going to get what's called spontaneous recovery, where all of a sudden, out of nowhere, as far as we can tell, the animal is scared of that formerly scary thing again after we thought they were cured. Um, if you incorporate teaching your animal to do something when they encounter that scary thing, that spontaneous recovery is less likely to happen. So that's why we do this. So uh, what I'm going to do now, um, and again, I'm moving faster than you guys would because we're trying to make for a decent TV here, um, is as soon as those dogs start barking, I'm going to ask Barley to touch his nose to my hand. My cue for that is boop. Um, and then I'm going to reward and then we're going to kind of repeat and then we're going to repeat with a couple different sound effects here so you guys can hear them. All right. And we're going to go back to that Doberman just because that was kind of a better bark than that Boston. Boop. Good. Turn it off and we'll repeat that a few times. All right. Oops. So. It's important that the, the sounds start first um, and then you cue your dog to do something. So you guys get to see me make mistakes here. That's the wonder of Facebook Live. Here we go. I'm going to turn on the music, ask Bar the music, the barking, and then ask Barley to touch my, his nose to my hand and then feed and then turn it off. All right. So good boy and off. All right. So that's all that is. Now I'm going to show you guys kind of the same sequence with a couple other sounds here. Um, and I see we actually have a couple people joining us. So if you guys have dogs that are sensitive to sounds and you want to go ahead and start trying this with me in like a live class format, absolutely go for it. All you need to do is find a sound that you would like to start practicing um, with and just start going through the motions with me, even if you're not necessarily working on something that your dog is struggling with. Um, so in the past, what I've done is I've taken Barley's collar off and I will shake it and drop treats and practice that way. So if you guys want to do that while we're doing this live, um, that would be really, really great. You guys get to practice it live. You can ask me questions if as you're doing the motions, it feels really weird. Um, so go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you think you're going to try that. Um, and I will try to help walk you through it. All right. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and do it here with Barley and I'm going to pretend that you guys are doing it because... Who knows, people are going to watch this later and maybe they are going to go ahead and try it. So now we're going to do the next kind of big one, which is thunder. Um, Barley, actually, I'm very lucky, does not really have um, thunderstorm issues um, as long as we're not in like earth shattering thunderstorms. So we're going to go ahead, let the thunder roll. Um, I actually found a seven second clip here on YouTube. I just Googled thunder sound effect. It was the first one that came up. Um, and I'm going to do two repetitions with just giving treats and then two repetitions of asking him to touch his nose to my hand. Good boy. We'll go again. Good boy. This one's nice because it's actually just a single thunderclap that you're getting here. Um, oops, you will turn off the auto replay. Thank you, YouTube. Um, so it's just a, thing, a single thunderclap, which makes it a lot easier for you guys if you're going forward um, with this. Um, so I would actually recommend using this particular clip. 
Um, although I'm sure there are plenty of great ones available on YouTube. So now we're going to start showing that operant behavior where I'm going to hit the thunderclap and then I'm going to ask him to do something and then he gets the reward, all right? Good boy. And you guys will notice I'm actually using quite a few treats here and that's what I would like you guys to go ahead and do as well. Um, this treat scatter that I'm doing, so you guys can't really see it, but I'm kind of scattering like 10 treats here around the ground. Um, it helps keep him busy for a little bit longer, which is really effective. Um, I'm also using really tiny kibble because that's um, what he's eating this month. Barley gets a different bag of food every time we go to the store. Um, and <laughs> uh, yeah, so using multiple treats here is great, especially when you're using something really small like this. If you've got a dog who really is really, really concerned about sounds, I would actually recommend using something higher value than just plain old kibble. Um, this is a great time for peanut butter, hot dogs, cheese whiz, all that good stuff. Um, so we will do a couple more where I actually ask him to target to my hand. Good boy. One last one. Good boy. And ultimately what we would like to see here for you guys is that your dog, um, if you do this enough times and you do more practice than what I'm doing here, cause you're actually doing it right. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, your dog is actually going to start as soon as he hears that thunderclap targeting your hand without you saying anything. That's how we know this is working. And then we can really start taking this on the road, increasing the volume, really start moving forward. Um, Cause again, ideally we are going to be seeing your dog saying, oh, that thunder, that means I hit not mom's hand and then I get those treats. Awesome. Cool. So now let's try um, a couple others here. So I have um, the sound of a skateboard going by. Um, and we will go ahead and try this. I'm gonna make this one a little bit louder just so you guys are gonna be able to hear it. Um, and again, if you guys wanna join in, go ahead and do that. Just find something that makes a little bit of noise. You can even just knock on a counter, drop treats, do it with me. Um, I'd like to ultimately be making these Facebook Lives a lot more interactive, um, YouTube videos, whatever, um, whatever medium you're watching this on, but I want this to be interactive for you guys as much as possible and make this feel a little bit more like an actual class that you guys are getting from me. All right, so here is our skateboard sound. And skateboards actually are something that kind of make Barley spook a little bit, especially when they go by really close, really fast, if he's jogging and he's kind of focused and he doesn't see him coming up. Um, so we'll see how he reacts to this. Good. Doesn't sound like much, does it? We'll turn that up a little bit here. Um, but um, this is the, part of the tough thing with the skateboards is it's generally not just the sound that's the issue for the dog, right? Uh, most dogs, it's not just hearing the skateboard that's the problem. It's the fact that they come up really, really fast. The movement's weird. They often, I find, come by a lot closer than we would like. Um, and they're not very good about saying, you know, like on your left. Um, so we'll try this again. We'll see how it goes. You guys are probably getting the drill. Um, and then we will do one last one of the sound of a dog collar jingling, and then we will call it good for today unless you guys have any questions for me. So here is the skateboard one more time. All right. And this last one is actually one that again might get Barley's attention. Um, and that is the sound of a dog collar jingling. Um, so I've got literally just Google dog collar jingling and it's a guy holding a fistful of dog tags, shaking them in front of the camera. Um, I don't know why he made that video, but it's exactly what we're looking for right now. So here we go. Good boy. Turn that off. You can see Barley actually got pretty, he was kind of looking at the computer screen there. He was really like, really kind of paying attention to that. He's a little bit more tense now. Um, we'll go ahead and try it again. Um, 
Lizzie's still looking pretty relaxed. He's still offering to lie down. He's still with me. He's still hanging in here. Um, but that was, that was actually the most exciting one of the day so far. Um, so here we go again. And you guys saw I was doing, I did a couple treat scatters, then I started moving over to that operant, the hand touch pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and see that. Turn it off, and we're gonna do several short reps here. So I'm gonna stop talking and just show, all right? Good. A lot of hands to operate everything at once. It would be really great right now to have a, a remote for my computer or have a helper, but alas, I have neither. Alrighty guys, so that is the basic gist of helping desensitize your dog to sounds using YouTube. Um, again, the big thing here is you guys are going to be moving more slowly, especially if you have a dog that has serious issues with this. We want to be starting at a really quiet level where your dog is nice and relaxed, and then we want to move forward nice and slowly. We want to use a lot of treats. Again, remember our discussion on the fact that we don't want to accidentally um, sensitize our dogs to something, meaning that they actually get more intense in their reactions rather than more calm. Um, and that generally is going to happen if either you're skipping treats um, or if you are moving too quickly. Habituation is also um, not as, as good as desensitization and that, again, is kind of the other option. Sometimes if you're not using treats and you kind of just make the dog deal with it, quote unquote, they will habituate. Sometimes, yeah, that works. The thing is, we don't know before it happens which way your dog is going to go, and it's going to be a lot easier if we just go with um, the protocol that we know is less likely to produce those really extreme fear reactions than, um, you know, trying to make our dogs just deal with it and hoping that we get habituation instead of sensitization. Um, the other thing here is that during a thunderstorm, during fireworks, all of these things, it is absolutely okay to comfort your dog during those situations. Comforting your dog shows that you're there for them. It can help lower their stress levels. It is not going to teach your dog to be scared. So for example, today is 9-11. I was just a child during 9-11. I was in first or second grade um, and I was pretty freaked. I was, you know, there were like rumors going around school that they were gonna like come to Ashland, Wisconsin next and I was a little kid so I believed that. Um, and my parents consoling me and telling me that that was not going to happen and that this was a terrible, terrible thing, but I was not personally in danger, did not make me act more scared. It made me feel better. It made me feel better towards my parents. And the same goes for comforting your dog during something that is really, really scary for him. You're not going to teach him to be scared. You're not going to teach your dog to be a wimp, essentially. You're going to teach them... Um, that you are someone who is trustworthy and helpful and you can actually help get them through that fear through your own presence. Um, finally, again, I want to remind you guys that you will need to take this on the road. Ultimately, you are going to run into the limitations of your speaker system and the fact that as soon as you pull out a laptop and a treat bag, your dog might be kind of onto you and know that this is a training situation and you might not see everything transfer over super well into real life right away. So what you guys need to do is you need to figure out how to set up these training situations um, as your dog gets better at them and you're ready to start taking them on the road in a way that is a little bit less obvious of a training situation. So maybe get a mason jar and put some Ooh. treats in it, um, you know, the day before, put them out um, and then ask a significant other to hide a sound effect somehow and um, set them off. Um, figure it out, you're gonna have to get creative, but again, if every time you work on your sound desensitization, you pull out your treat bag, you pull out your laptop, you pull out all, you know, you know, all, your, all your gadgets, um, eventually your dog is going to be awesome when you have the treat bag and the gadgets out, but it not, is not necessarily going to transfer over, so figuring out how to get creative and take it on the road. Finally, a word about medication. Um, I am not a veterinarian, I do not have medical training, I do, however, um, read about this a lot and I know that there are some medications out there that are very very good 
for helping reduce your dog's sensitivity to noise. So if that is something that you think your dog's sensitivity to noise is kind of off the charts, or um, basically one of the best rules of thumb that I've heard of, which is from Dr. Jen of Dr. Jen's dog blog, is if it's a problem that's bothering you, training. If it's a problem that's bothering the dog, meaning sounds are really, really upsetting to your dog, and this is stressful for your dog, it might be time to consider medication, and there are some medications out there that are really, really great for helping reduce your dog's anxiety and stress level around different noises, and especially these medications um, these days and the vets that are good with them are really, really good. You are often able to find a dosage that really helps your dog without changing your dog's personality, without making them lethargic, without all of those side effects that we're really worried about with medications. So if you have a dog that is really on that that more extreme level where medication is kind of a possibility, I would talk to your vet about that. Um, and I can't really give any more specific medication info beyond that, but it is something to keep in mind, especially with this particular issue. Medication is um, often a really, really good way to go. Um, and that comes in the form of either situational medication where you're like, oh crap, it is 4th of July, we're gonna give our dog something pretty hefty for the day, or it can come in the form of something lower dose that goes uh, every day. Um, again, your vet can help you with that. I don't really know the specifics, but I do know that those are options. So thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, share, all of that good stuff. It really helps other people find this information. Um, and go ahead and shoot me your questions. Um, you can find me on all of the social medias or email me, Kayla at journeydogtraining.com. Let me know what you guys would like me to do for future um, training Tuesdays, uh, let me know how things go. I'm always excited to hear uh, what worked, what didn't work, how I could be better um, and more helpful to you guys in the future. So uh, cheers, um, and uh, we're gonna end with just a really, a little moment of silence for 9-11. Um, I haven't talked about it much today, but it's been on my mind a lot, and uh, you know, that just, that's a place that we need to be right now, okay? So just for a couple seconds. All right, guys, we will see you next week.